This is aji amarillo, the most popular and used ingredient in Peruvian food. Now there are several different ways to use this. You have the fresh pepper itself, they also have it dry, of course in a paste format, and also as a seasoning. Now I was told by you that this is the MSG of Peru, and today we're gonna put it to the test with some steaks. As everything starts off with these, the star of today's show. There are three beautiful ribeye steaks, one and a half inches thick, and just exactly what you're looking for whenever you're buying steaks. Now to season them I kept it real simple. I went with a good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder since one of the steak is going to be the control the very next one i use the powder seasoning i added a good amount we want to feel this flavor and really see if it's going to enhance the steak or not the very next steak instead of using the seasoning i went with the paste i just made sure to slather the whole steak with it let's just say the more the better once all of the steaks were done the next thing to do was to go ahead bag them up vacuum seal it and they are now ready for a sous vide talking about that i'll be cooking all of them in the same container at a 135 degrees Fahrenheit for two hours. That is perfect because it allows me time to go ahead and make an awesome side dish. And I'll tell you one thing, this one definitely has some Peruvian flair because everything starts off with this. It's a turbot fish and its skin reminds me of Godzilla. Well, hopefully it's gonna taste a lot better than it looks because the first thing to do is to go ahead and clean it out. We're looking for the meat only. We don't need the skin. Once everything was nice and cleaned, our meat is now ready. The next thing to prepare is a wonderful sauce and this one is super simple because everything goes into the blender. I first started with some onions, followed by aji amarillo, cilantro, ichimi tagorashi, ginger, celery, lime juice, soy sauce, and one whole egg. Now blend everything together and my sauce is done. It does not get any easier than that. Now for the fish, I first throw everything into a bowl. Then I season it with salt, black pepper, ginger, garlic, MSG, and mixed everything well. As the next thing to do is to go ahead and add a good amount of lemon juice. To finish it up, I added a good amount of cilantro, followed by red onions. Mixed everything well once again and set it aside. For the batter, it's pretty straightforward. I started with all-purpose flour, followed by water. Mixed everything well, as now is where the magic happens. The first thing to do is to squeeze the fish into a bowl, but squeezing the juices out as much as possible will help it stick together. As the next thing to do is to go ahead and throw it in the batter as now it's ready to go into the fryer. Remember that the fish is fully cooked already, so I'm deep frying it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it's slightly golden brown, it's time to take it off. To plate it up is pretty simple. First, a little bit of that sauce we just made, followed by our deep fried ball ceviche, a good amount of that wonderful sauce, and to finish it up, some finely sliced red onions, followed by a little bit of microgreens to be fancy. Now this is today's side dish. I really hope the guys enjoy it. Hopefully, we can all say the same exact thing about today's experiment, because by now, my steaks were fully cooked. So I went ahead, removed them from the bag, let them dry real good, and once I did, I know exactly what you're thinking. My steaks don't look that good right now, but watch this. Alright everybody, here we got our beautiful steak, my two taste testers. Are you guys hungry? Always, baby. If we're here and we're suited up, you already know we're hungry. Here's the deal. We have some beautiful steaks, a little bit of an experiment today. I also have an incredible side dish here, which is ceviche. Oh. Enough talking, let's give this a go, all right? Well, we're gonna start in this direction. Please dig in, gentlemen. I feel like whenever I'm here, Guga, you always start as far away from me as possible. The farther the better, no, Leo? Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Wow, it does not get old, Papa. That's a sous vide steak. Mm. I think that that has to be a, like a higher grade type of steak because it feels a little bit fattier, still has that nice beefy flavor, perfectly seasoned. I can't say anything else, guys. That's a perfect steak right there. Can you guys tell which steak this is? That's the control. That's a Google steak right there, baby. All right, let's dig in for the second one. Looking a little funky, right? Why, why, why is it funky? Because why? Because it's yellow. I wonder why. <laughs> Enough talking, let's give it a go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Wait, hold on. There's a lot more flavor there. It's got a little kick to it. Yeah, very little though. You can tell it's there. It's not punching in the face, but it's saying hello. I will say that I just like this. It feels really tender. It also tastes a bit peppery as well. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but I like where this is going. I thought it was going to be more spicy, to be honest with you. It's just a nice, wonderful flavor. Yellow and spicy. What are we doing? I can see your brain working extra hard, Leo. I don't know what's yellow and spicy, but it tastes good. Did you enjoy it more than the control steak? I would have to see where the third one ranks and then give you my final ranking at the end. With all that being said, 
ceviche time. Yes. It's fried. It's like a ceviche ball. And you guys have no idea what kind of fish we actually used for this. Enough talking. Let's give it a try. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> That's so interesting. Wow. That's money, dude. Super unique twist on ceviche that I've never had before. A little bit of crunch on the ceviche. It has a nice tempura flavor. That little light freshness from the veggies, the fish itself. This is really, really good ceviche. How do you guys like the sauce? Because I'm in love with it. The fish is already fresh, but then the sauce adds that little bit to it that it's missing with the onions and the greens. I will say this. There's only one problem making the ceviche. Make sure you make enough, everybody. With all that being said, I'm excited to go for the last one. Are you guys ready? Can I reach? Ooh. Does it smell different? Oh yeah, mm. it smells very different. Can't tell what it is, but it smells good. Enough talking, let's give it a go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. I have found the winner. No, you found the winner, okay. Mm -hmm. That kind of spiciness got kicked up a little bit. Not spicy like it's hot. <sighs> It's more like spices in general. I do feel a little bit more almost like pepperiness, a little smokiness. I think it's beautiful with this steak. It still doesn't overpower the beef flavor, which is always the most important thing. Is it more spicy? I wouldn't say it's more spicy. I would agree with what Leo said. It has that peppery taste to it. If I had to choose a winner, it would be with this last steak. Absolutely. I am with you guys as well. Give me a pound here because we are, this is completely unanimous. So I use the MSG from Peru, which is called Aji Amarillo. This one is kind of like in a paste form and then and this one here is in the powder form. So in a powder form, we can fill it a lot more. But the true winner is gonna be that side dish. Oh, you still have more, can I have some? No. <laughs> Remember, if you have a suggestion of your MSG from your country, let me know in the comments down below because we're gonna make it happen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe. Remember, everything I use is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.